we are going to have a couple vanilla Minecraft mobs in Legends. So you're going to see some familiar ones, the creepers, the skeletons, and the zombies. And then we also introduce the plank golem, the cobblestone golem, grindstone golem, and the mossy golem. And then the rest you're just going to have to find out in the game. When we first started thinking of Minecraft Legends, we had to find a partner who had the expertise to build strategic games. And when we ran across Blackbird Interactive, they have a great resume. And so we started collaborating more and more and they understood Minecraft very well. The mobs and legends are still gonna be very recognizable. They have that same look and feel with a little bit of a twist. One difference you'll notice is they're not hostile. So in the game, the hero does befriend them. They become allies as opposed to what you see in vanilla Minecraft today where they are hostile uh, in and around the world. The game is a utopia, so you have a bit of a different relationship with something like the creeper in our game than you would in vanilla Minecraft, because when you see creepers, you're scared of them and you kind of want to run away. And we needed to keep that kind of, you know, it explodes when it gets near something. So we worked that into the mechanic, but by keeping the texture, proportions, making sure we maintain its like iconic facial features. We tried making the zombie what, smile. Whatnot, but it, it didn't quite seem in character. You know, we tried to take the personality of the characters into consideration. Um, we put hats on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we put hats on them. We yeah, made them cuter, bigger eyes, more appealing. Um, yeah. I think the animation team did a really good job. The reason we ended up putting hats on the zombie and the skeleton is because as any Minecraft player knows, they burn in daytime. So we had to kind of justify a way for them to not turn into flame in the middle of the day. So we had to come up with some hats that were appropriate to their personality, but playing off of the like vanilla mechanic of they can wear a helm and then they don't explode. So we had some fun with that. It's this idyllic world. There's nothing but peace. All the beings of the overworld coexisting with harmony without fear. But then something does get introduced to their pristine world. A species called the piglins, they found their way to cross over and they're there to devour, take everything that's not theirs. We kind of just treated them a bit like they were children that were kind of armed with the resources to do what they want, but maybe not the knowledge of how to do it well. So like the, the grunters and the runts, you know, they're the ones that kind of get sent in first. There's a million of them, they die really quickly. Yeah. They're the tiny guys and they offer quite a bit of comedy relief because they're small and they're holding these like large weapons that are too big for their body. Yeah. The animation like worked on them and it looked like they were unbalanced all the time. Yeah. We just had a lot of fun with how do you separate these different hordes of piglins from each other, but still keep that main sort of theme that they come from the nether. And at the time that we were designing it, the nether update hadn't come out yet. And so as we were designing for the piglins, we kind of had to keep our head on a swivel because we have to, you know, try and keep pace with what Vanilla Minecraft is doing. We had to find ways to introduce new things that are unique to this game. But at the same time, we had to make sure that the story and the mystery that is so dear to the Minecraft franchise is respected. So always finding that nice middle ground has been a constant challenge, but I think we got to a really good place and we're really happy about it. We wanted to design a ranged unit that kind of acted as a turret. And the animation department did such a great job about getting yeah. uh, them like personality because the plant golem kind of reminds me of a golden retriever a little bit. He's just kind of like happy and scrappy. And then the cobblestone golem, he was meant to be like a melee unit, so kind of up close and personal, kind of slow, steady. Yes. They're like your workhorses, they'll get the job yeah. done. 
The grindstone golems, they're the disruptors, so they're gonna come in and kind of knock back any enemy units, probably to make room for the range units to come in and help. And the mossy golems are the support units, so they come in, they have kind of this like water effect that heals any of the allies or the hero if, if they're kind of in their, their area. One of the things that you'll notice straight away when you see all these new golems is that they're cute, they're adorable. From a story perspective, it makes sense that they're innocent looking because this is a peaceful, idyllic world. What they didn't know is that they possess an ability that can be helpful on the battlefield. That's kind of the behind the idea of making these golems seem innocent, but they're so much more than that. Once you acquire other units later, you kind of understand how they slot in in the hierarchy of the other units. You might think like, oh, well, the skeleton also is a ranged unit. You learn kind of through trial and error, like when you will use you know, a plank golem and when you will use a skeleton. When you're playing through the game, you don't really feel like you're missing out on anything. Whether or not you play with the new units or whether or not you play with vanilla Minecraft units, they kind of offer something different for every player.